Hello everybody, uh, my name's Georgie. You might have seen me around and about doing a couple of things on social media for Rhino Greenhouses. And today I'm talking to Eli, who is a YouTuber and um, does lovely videos about lots of things to teach people about gardening. Um, and she's just a lovely person as well. So we're gonna have a chat today about some nice gardening type stuff. Um, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? I shall indeed. Hello everyone. And I promise I didn't dare to say that. Um, yes, so, yep, as she said, Eli, and I'm from a YouTube channel called The Kitchen Garden with Eli and Kate, and it is just us having fun in the garden, growing some food, growing some flowers, getting things wrong, just having a laugh, basically, and sharing it, and it's this garden. <laughs> yeah, because we don't get to see Kate so much visually, but I'm assuming she's doing a lot of work behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, Kate tends to avoid it as much as she can, doesn't like being on camera, but um, she'll help out if I need her, so sometimes <laughs> she'll move camera shots for me and things. You don't realise how hard it is to do YouTube garden stuff, because you're trying to garden, and you're conscious of a camera and sound and light, and, and you get engrossed with your carrots or whatever, and think, oh no, I never hit record! <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the weather you've got to contend with up there. Yeah, so it looks lovely and bright and gorgeous. Um, as you can see, it's quite windy, uh, but it's not too cold today. But we don't get the heat waves you guys get. So. <laughs> yeah, it's weirdly <laughs> muggy where I am today, actually. Um, right, so why don't you, because um, when, when I chatted to you a bit in the past, you, you've mentioned to me that you actually haven't been gardening for it all that long. And when you first started, you were kind of like, ah, mud, dirt. Um, so so how, did, how did you get to the point you're, you're now at? Why did gardening become so much more for you? Do you know what? I can't think why I got into gardening. This basically, this is the first garden I've ever had. So I didn't grow up with parents at gardens and that kind of thing. I don't know why, but for some reason I had a flat in Glasgow um, and I had a little tiny balcony and we're talking maybe two metres by about a metre, maybe, if I was lucky. Uh, and I, for some reason, thought I'm going to grow some tomatoes and things. And I had one of those little polythene greenhouse things because, you know, tomatoes fit in them. <laughs> you can see how much I didn't know what I was doing and although I grew plants I couldn't get through I couldn't get tomatoes or anything on them because didn't have the sun didn't have the heat that kind of stuff we bought this house because we both decided we wanted out of the city and we wanted some outdoor space but I don't know what happened that turning point from buying a house with a garden somehow I went crazy gardener to the point where my, my in-laws referred to me as all sorts of weird gardening names from when they were kids and tv shows and um, some I think it's bay leaf is the one that my father in law refers to me as bay leaf. Older people might know what this is. I don't. But I don't know what happened. It was like overnight I just went crazy for the garden. And like you said, I used to hate dirt, terrified of creepy crawlies, I wouldn't put my hands in the dirt, that kind of thing. And I remember trying to plant things with big gardening gloves on to keep clean and so I didn't have to touch anything and realising this is ridiculous I can't feel anything it doesn't work and ripping them I remember that ripping them off and just getting stuck in and thinking it's it really you know I haven't seen a beastie yet it's okay <laughs> yeah, still don't like spiders I have to say but generally I'm doing all right I'm coping <laughs> Yeah, see that's, I mean, it sounds like you kind of had a moment where you were like, nope, stuff this, I am just putting my hands in the dirt. <laughs> I think when you're a gardener, you get to the point where it's more important that your plants grow. And if that means you getting dirty, you just accept it. Yeah, I, I mean, I yeah. keep, because I, um, I have to garden, uh, you know, around my job as well. And um, I'll often, I'll go into the garden before work, after work. So I'm wearing what I want to wear to the office. And I just completely forget. Shirt. I completely forget what I'm wearing and just get mud under, you know, all over everything. It's on my face and I can't, you know, when you do this yeah. and stuff and then you've got it on your face, you don't even know it. And so you get to the office and someone's like. Yeah, you might want it. Yeah. I have to say though, your garden, I've loved watching you go from no garden, not interested to mad lockdown gardener. It's been brilliant. You've got a proper amazing garden now. Yeah, I Maybe I we mean... should be have somebody interview you one day for one of these things. <laughs> Maybe so, maybe so. Oh, that's nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I have been enjoying my garden as well. And, and through the lockdown, obviously, was when it kind of exploded for me. What's it been like for you during the lockdown? Do you think that you've done more gardening since the lockdown? Or do you just, yeah. <laughs> have you done, have you been able to like 
experiment with more things? Have you done more um, of the videos or are you doing less of the videos because you get too into the gardening? All of the above. I think <laughs> more gardening but different type. Rather than it used to be panic fitting it all into the weekend regardless of the weather. Because let me tell you, all these fences got painted in the rain a couple of years ago and the fence at the back got built and painted in the rain a couple of years ago because that was all the time we had. And we were howling and giggling at trying to paint things in the rain. <laughs> because of, because the lockdown we've been about, it has been in and out as stuff needs done rather than those big massive weekends of trying to do everything. Right. Um, I did do a bit of an experiment. I had a, I've got these self-watering systems that I use in the greenhouse. I had a spare one. And I had to go run some crochets in it because I thought, ooh, crochets get powdery mildew and usually it's caused by inconsistent watering. If I do this, maybe, you know, and then discovered that I'd never actually had powdery mildew and I misunderstood what was going on. And now I had it in these pots really badly. So oh, now I've got powdery mildew all over my herbs that I've never had before. Oh no, but we've learned something and that's so we've much of what learned. gardening is. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And that was the whole thing with me with YouTube. I'm loving the lockdown means that I'm getting a video out every single week, at least one every single week, which I struggled to do before. But it means that, you know, as I'm learning these things, I can be quickly going, oh, a thing that somebody might find useful and putting it out there. So it's been really good for that with the videos. Whereas yeah. normally I have to plan so much for my time that when cool things happen that would be useful, kind of thought of time to put it out there and then it's too late by the time I've got time so, mm, yeah, yeah so it's been good that way again so, stop going about how good lockdown is Eli <laughs> it's okay I think it's important to that people are able to say the very good things about it as well um yeah so so since we're on the topic of, of the YouTube channel when did it start why did you decide to start doing it I think it really properly took off when I started doing stuff in the greenhouse Right. Because so many people don't understand what a greenhouse is, what it can do, and what it can't do. There are loads of myths about greenhouses. And I think the chance of having somebody in there being honest about what it was like was maybe a really good thing. So I think the first gardening type video I did, I was sitting in, not that one, my other old greenhouse that we shall not mention. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can mention it, it's fine. We know uh, how I still wake up in a sweat with the thoughts of that. But um, I was in there potting up petunias, I think, in a hanging basket. And I think that was the first one that people watched the video that hadn't come from the blog. And I was like, oh, this is a bit strange. So, but again, obviously, lockdown, so many new gardeners in lockdown that have appeared on the channel going, first time I've ever done this, help. So, yeah, I think everybody's suddenly into gardening. <laughs> yeah I, I mean it certainly has been incredibly busy for, for us at the factory and everything uh, gardening has just grabbed hold of a lot of people and I mean yeah. having a greenhouse is very much like a, a step up most first-time gardeners won't have access to that kind of thing yeah. um but so you you're currently yeah you you mentioned it just then that this is your rhino that you've got back there um is your yeah, second this is greenhouse. Olive. <laughs> yeah so before I had the lovely olive named because she is the Tuscan olive color really original um, I actually had one of those polycarbonates so proper greenhouse so it was a proper metal frame so sort of aluminium frame all of that but instead the glass it's polycarbonate panels which is awesome um, it's way 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 cheaper so as a first step in it is a fantastic way to do it for me it was that I'd never had a garden so was I going to get bored and you know could I splash out this money and then decide actually I don't like this so that gave me that not overly expensive step in but let me just tell you the whole wind thing here we are surrounded by fields and farmland and then the, the sea is there sort of five minutes behind us this is just a wind tunnel that comes from there it goes that way and it's incredibly strong some days i used to get up to go to work in the morning six in the morning and half my greenhouse was missing and i'd be going around the neighborhood hunting for bits of my greenhouse and this got to the point where there was more gaffer tape and things sticking together than actual greenhouse i was like i've had enough can't cope <laughs> yeah, as so you very problems. wisely upgraded to a lovely lady rider yeah i went online and i was like super strong greenhouse survives the wind i think that was my actual google search <laughs> Which does work if you're looking for, yeah, for, for a rhino, then that will come up if you tie in strong. <laughs> just a list of rhino pages. 
Yeah, it was the promotional photo the guy did with all the guys sitting on top. Yeah. And they were like, that's the chap for me. <laughs> and yeah. I can say stands up a belter. It really is that strong. <laughs> Besides the um, the strength of it, is there anything else that you think you've had that's been better with Olive compared to the previous one? Yeah. I didn't, this was a, a happy surprise, wasn't expecting it. You know how you do properly read things, like measurements and things? Uh, yeah, it was the height because the polycarbonate I had in a lot of the greenhouses, they're actually way lower than you expect. So the tomato plants hit that roof very, very quickly because of the angle mm -hmm. and then they grow up and then back in on you. So it's like a jungle in there sometimes. The rhinos actually just naturally taller, not just the apex, but just where it all sits. So mm -hmm. it's much easier with the tomato plants. They're not hitting the roof quite as quickly and they don't do that grow back in on you thing. Because again, here in a greenhouse, not good. <laughs> Here's the gardening does not mix. Yeah, I think having the headroom makes a lot of difference, particularly if you're spending time in there, then you're going to get like a lot of hunching over, get very uncomfortable very quickly and more claustrophobic. And it's the kind of say. thing people don't realise. They just, you don't think of that until it's too late and you've bought something. So read the small print. Yeah, and lots of people, um, if they, they choose to, they can heat the greenhouse, you know, you can run yeah. electricity in there and run heaters and things. Are you going to experiment with anything like that? Uh, no, I wish I had considered all that before we got her installed and we could put power out to her and stuff like that because I think that would be fantastic. So if you don't have a greenhouse and you think that these are things to put in place now because it's too late when she's built. <laughs> um, so we'll see. So I think it'll be a good experiment to see what you can do in an unheated greenhouse in winter and then I may just cry and decide next year I'm getting heating. You, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> okay well yeah i'll certainly be interested to see what you get up to yeah over over the months when f typically for a lot of gardeners there's not necessarily a lot yeah going on in the greenhouse yeah what about the rest of the garden do you do much over the winter um it's mostly keeping it tidy and dealing with just all the kind of frost hit bits and pieces and not because the whole thing with the garden is if you let it go it can be quite depressing and then it's hard to get going because it doesn't make you feel good. So it's that mostly in winter, it's about keeping on top of things and trying to keep as much colour as you can. So we deliberately, we've got a lot of sort of shrubs and things that keep the leaves over winter. So we've got camellias, schemias, that type of thing. Um, and it means you've always got at least greenery, but you can also play with things that have variegated leaves. So we've got a lot of bits and pieces out the front that are variegated. So you've got different tones and colours. Um, and then along this bed, I've been putting in uh, little cyclamen and dianthus and viola and things because they tend to do quite well over the winter. And petunias, not petunias, I say that all the time. <sighs> this is where my YouTubers know that I mix up words a lot. So you have to put <laughs> up with me. Primroses, because they again, they coat all these kind of little ground plants coat quite well with winter. So it's a way of having splashes of colour that can just help you over the winter so it doesn't feel so bleak. Since you mentioned, you know, that, that sometimes during the winter, looking out in the garden can be a, a bit more bleak and a bit more depressing. Um, you have mentioned that gardening for you does help with anxiety and things like that. Yeah. And, and do you find that going into the colder months, you're kind of more prepared for that to, you know, be harder again? Or, you know, is, is yeah. there strategies you have? I, I have to be honest, it has changed since I started gardening. I used to really, really struggle once we came into autumn, winter. I mean, especially in Scotland, pretty much it's rain here and it's cold and it's rain and it's wind. We don't get so much of those beautiful Christmas card pictures of the, the snow and the robin and things. It's pretty much rain here and it's green bleak. And I used to really, really struggle um, to the point where I had a blue light to try and help me through quite a lot to mm -hmm. kind of mimic the sunlight thing. I kept saying, oh, the gardens made a massive difference. And I, I thought it was because I had more outdoor time. But I'm actually starting to realise it's not. It's about understanding the place the seasons have. Winter is not fabulous like summer, but we need it. The garden needs that time, that cold spell, because a lot of the plants need that to get their energy going for the next year. It helps kill off a lot of the garden pests that would just take over otherwise. You know, all these different seasons have their place. And once you understand the seasons, 
as a gardener, I think it, it helps. It's, I mean, I still don't love it, but I'm not as bad as I was. But the thing that I look forward to is that kind of February time we get the first snowdrops. There's mm-hmm. one in the rockery. I've re- we planted hundreds that <laughs> never, ever came up. There's one that comes up in the rockery, and that's my little moment. When it comes up, it's like, oh, spring's coming. So for this year, because we just um, extended this bed at the fence, and I've planted lots of daffodils and crocuses and snowdrops. So I'm quite excited now to like when they come up. <laughs> so yes, I think sometimes you have to just accept life and the way things are. And once you can do that, you can start working with it rather than dreading it and hating it. And yeah, come back to me in February and quote me on that one. <laughs> But even, we're talking about the seasons thing, but do you know even, do you know that thing when you get home from work and you've had a really mad day and it's quite like you're you're still kind of all caught up and stuff? We have this routine we do now. It's like a break between the work day and the home day. Uh, and we still do it now, even with lockdown, is we just go around the garden and we deadhead. Ten minutes. Just literally we start in that corner and we just walk around for ten minutes and deadhead and pick any weeds we see and stuff. And it's not fancy gardening, you know, it's, it's not going to win us any massive marrow prizes or anything like that. But it does that switch off thing. I think it helps and it really does make a difference because otherwise I can find, I've got a type of job where it's high energy a lot of the time. So, you know, trying to switch off can be quite hard because I'm still thinking if I do that, if I do this, I can saw that, I should have done that. So it gives me that whole, no, we're at home, not work anymore. And I think that really helps to kind of bring the anxiety down, mm. cope with it a bit. And yeah. I do that myself just now because I'm here. If I have a particularly difficult fit for work, I can come out into the garden, usually a coffee and just walk around for five minutes and then back going, ah. Yeah. Gardens are a fantastic thing. Although, again, it's one of those myths. People don't like to admit that sometimes your garden can be quite stressful as well. Like I was talking about when the greenhouse is messy. I get really, really anxious and it's difficult. I have to get clean and tidy and everything's squared away. So, you know, you, you, you kind of need to understand how things mm-hmm. affect you. Yeah. If you're super into neat and tidy, sometimes a garden can be a bit stressful. <laughs> We've just shifted position, everybody, just because it's having a bit of connection issues in the garden. So we've gone back inside so we can have a little look at, oh, this is a nice corner you've got set up here. It's like you've had it ready for us. Yeah, that this might be um a YouTube recording space, maybe. Aha, uh-huh. is it now? <laughs> with yeah, with the most I'll give little Emily a shout out. Uh, the most fantastic pom pom art that uh, little Emily, who is ten, made for oh. us so that we could have it on our channel. Oh. Um, she did an art installation project thing, uh, all about bee friendly gardens, and she made pom pom art to sell them to make money so she could make a bee friendly garden. Oh, so, how lovely. Like, so, <laughs> well, her work is being seen far and wide now. <laughs> and I can see you've got, uh, is that the mother of Morag? Oh, yeah, this is Morag's mum. Does so Morag's mum have a name? So, uh, actually, no, Just she's just my baby. I'm very, very fond of her. Oh. Um, yeah, but I almost lost her. I mean, she's over, I think she must be over 10 years old now. Wow. But... Yeah, I, I kill, almost killed her with kindness. Far too much water. Uh, Not enough light. I've learned a lot since then. <laughs> common problem with houseplants, I think. <laughs> yeah, because um, for any of you who don't know, um, Eli very kindly sent me a, a, a cutting of this particular jade plant in the corner um, that, yes, uh, was actually a fully fledged little plant um, uh, that she sent to my office for me. So Morag now lives in the office. Um, so she's not here at the moment for me to show her, but yeah, I'm, I was so touched to get her in the post. So thank you so much for sending her. I really wasn't expecting quite such an elaborate, you know, I was expecting like a little, little cutting in the post. Um, so thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for chatting to me. It's been really, no, thank really you. lovely. It's been lovely. Yeah, we should do this more often. We, yeah, we just chat about garden stuff. It's brilliant. Nice. Being a wee natter. <laughs> And I get to say that it's work. Uh, it's all right for some. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop rubbing in things eventually. Um, right, That's okay. Fine.
<laughs> right. Well, uh, thank you so much, Eli. Um, I'm sure we'll speak again very soon. And yeah, I hope Definitely. everyone enjoyed watching. Thanks very much. And you. And stay safe. And I will see you on Instagram at some point. Probably. <laughs> Excellent, then, George. See ya.